Imagine yourself in a family gathering. Food, friends, family, good times. You're feeling confident today, sporting a miniskirt. Then, out of nowhere, this older relative of yours comes in, sits at your table, looks you dead in the eye, and says, Uy, anak, wag ka ganyan manamit, baka may bumastas sayo. And for those in the room that don't understand a word of Filipino, the phrase translates to, don't dress like that, someone might touch you inappropriately. Every girl's worst nightmare. And somehow, within that moment, you feel the heat start rising up your face. And this immense urge to answer back overwhelms you a little, but not enough. As usual, you bite your tongue knowing full well that giving a response will only make you the fool, not them. And this is all acceptable because, well, you're younger, yay. So you gotta tone it down. As children and young adults, we're often told not to be expressive with our ideas and opinions, particularly when this contradicts the belief of an adult. So we do what all the good kids do. We shush ourselves, smile agreeingly, and play the role of the good, respectful kid just a little longer, at least until we're old enough to sit at the grown-up's table. Where I grew up in the UAE, nearly all my Asian peers have immigrant parents, so I'm sure you've heard all the jokes. The tiger mom, A for Asian, no A, no food, succeed first or don't come home. You get the gist. As brutal as these jokes may sound, I wouldn't deny its prevalence in our society. From as early as middle school, middle school, I've seen nuanced implications in the way of the stereotypes, in the way that they affect my classmates and how they react to small failures. Like how when they fail a small test or asking the wrong questions or saying the wrong things. I've also seen fellow students be told not to be vocal about their opinions in their own household when it comes to any existing social issue because apparently it might make other family members feel uncomfortable. It makes it more ironic to think that in school, we're constantly told day after day to be expressive about our opinions and speak our truths, but it's only valid up until it makes an adult feel uncomfortable. In other words, pressure in an Asian household is somewhat holistic, not just within mine, but also of those around me. I've also met plenty of students who have been advised to tone down their opinions because it challenges those of an adult. It's ironic to think that the very people who tell us to analyze the information we're given or to think critically are the very people who are threatened by it. So basically, you can be smart, but put it in writing, hide it behind books, a smile, a laugh. Do what you must, but don't voice it out. And so, growing up this way, many kids, particularly we Asians, make our way through family gatherings by presenting ourselves in this watered-down, obedient manner curated to fit our culture, and by extension, our elders' definition of what a good, obedient, and respectful child is, a label many of us subconsciously try to strive for, regardless of how pressuring it is. I wanted to scream, hurl back, call her out on her tactless comment, but... Of course, I didn't. My subconscious desire to be the good and accepted child silenced the voice within me. They say it's fortitude to bite your tongue, but when you bite your tongue a little too hard, you lose sight of what it is you really wanted to say. Silencing takes many forms. Some are more pronounced, while others are more nuanced. And although moving back to the Philippines has made me feel more disconnected than ever, I realize that this very pressure that I've been observing and experiencing back home has been a common ground between me and my Filipino Chinese peers, something we bond over regardless of how different in the way we view things and do things. Funny enough, during the early days of me transferring at St. Jude, one of the first questions that popped into my head was, why does everyone seem so soft-spoken? And it registered to me, it clicked to me that well, the same pressure that I've been seeing and observing back home was the same exact thing that they're experiencing too. 
So funny story, after that, I actually asked my friend, is there something I shouldn't do when interacting with my schoolmates and batchmates? And she said, word per word, don't be too open about what you say and what you do. The crazy thing is, this pressure is almost always disguised in well-intended phrases like, we're doing it for your own good, or it's for your future, not ours, or we know what's best for you. Now, this can be very confusing to some because passive aggressive phrases and comments tend to mean well. But at least for me, the reason why it took some time for me to realize that I was being quieted down because the phrases that I was hearing, the comments that I were getting, weren't overt as, don't be an idiot, don't, be, don't speak up. Instead, they imposed their comments in a very subtle yet equally silencing way. Like, Tina, this is an adult conversation. Or, don't be too bold. Or, my personal favorite, wag kang pelosopo. Though, it may vary from person to person, I know for a fact how common it is of instilling pressure in this way. With the number of friends that I have that rant about this day after day done in this particular way. And with every more friend of mine that I hear rant about this immense pressure, I time after time have not seen the picture of the issue change ever. And though it may sound like a very, very weird generalization, Asians tend to refuse the idea of change. Like, I mean it in the literal sense. My parents refused to get a new car even if it was literally break breaking down. And mind you, that car was like 13 years old, and they only replaced it like this year. I mean, it's pretty much given that any type of change is uncomfortable for everybody. But Asian households have a tendency to hold on to what they're used to because, well, they think to themselves that it worked for me, so it should work for my child. But it doesn't really take into account the new emerging beliefs and changes already happening in our society. Older generations in Asian households are generally not very accepting of younger kids and children having beliefs that oppose their tradition. Don't get me wrong, culture and tradition are very beautiful, diverse things, but as time passes, we do have to slowly integrate the new things we learn and improve our ways of parenting. It's so crucial for these traditions of parenting through pressure to slowly evolve because it, it is what has an ultimate say on one's identity. It's what establishes their beliefs, perspectives, the way they express empathy, basically everything. And I know this because even if I grew up 4,000 miles away from this place, the people I met here live through the same reality, the same pressure. It really makes me wonder how much more young adults are shushed whenever we have an excellent idea to say. It saddens me because we have so many insights to offer as young adults. Social media and the internet have an abundance of resources that we access nowadays to inform ourselves about the world around us. Our generation in particular is always up to voice out our opinions whenever we can, and even more when it comes to social issues and fighting blatant injustices. We have the capacity to inform each other hold big, account, uh, big figures accountable when relevant, the ability to call out wrongs and correct them. I know that, like totally, any generation can totally do this too, but our generation specifically takes this seriously because we know that it's our future at stake and not the older generations. This sense of responsibility actually empowers us. It gives us a purpose, a motivation, a push to do better and bigger things. If we're constantly told to just quiet down, then we will further be disconnected from the realities around us and be discouraged to take part in doing things and advocate for good causes that better our society. Being pressured passive aggressively only discourages us further rather than lifting us up. When our voices are acknowledged, we truly feel like we exist and have a space in the world. Continuously being pressured to hush up will only be a detriment to our relationships with family, making us feel like reaching out to family should be 
a last resort, not a first as it should be. It creates this perception in our heads that whatever concern we have to personally address, it would not be acknowledged due to the numerous times we did try to open up, we would just be shut down. And this is a breeding ground for generational trauma that will take the entirety of our lives to figure out and sort, considering how ingrained it is within us already. Experiencing some of these things myself, if not most, I always dream of one way to fix all of this. In an instant, snap of a finger and bam, all Asian kids can finally speak up whenever they feel like it. But realistically, there really isn't a cookie cutter solution to the problem. Because all Asian households are different, what works for one kid may not work for another. Two societies can never be identical. Though, I do think that this is what makes us so cool. All Asian households are diverse, and sticking out like sore thumbs is what makes us awesome. But even crazier than that, it's funny how, despite our differences, we can reap similarities such as these that connect us with one another. Thank you.